Hello and welcome to this video on plasma donations. Plasma donations are a similar phenomena to blood donations, but involve separating out the red blood cells or erythrocytes from the rest of your blood content and returning these cells to you. Plasma is a very useful thing as it is used in the creation of many blood products, research tools, and more. When you make a blood donation, you are giving all the content of your veins. It is made up of a lot of different material. The four major components are plasma, which is mostly made from water, erythrocytes, leukocytes, which are your immune cells, and finally platelets. These four products in blood are useful together, but individually can be applied in specific ways that can be even more useful and effective. Plasma as part of your blood is the liquid part, and it makes up about half give or take. It's mostly made up of water, and then there is a small fraction, approximately 10%, that is made from the various material that makes plasma. This is things like nutrients, proteins, minerals, sugars, lipids, and all sorts of other things. Plasma is the liquid component of your blood, but does not carry any oxygen in itself, nor does it take away most of the carbon dioxide that's taken up by red blood cells, although there is some dissolved in plasma. This leads to the first stage of plasma donations. They can occur two ways. The first is the least desirable, but perhaps most common. It is the creation of a mixed plasma which is sourced from whole blood. When you donate your blood, you may not be donating blood that will be used as is. In some cases, certain blood types may be in excess supply, or extremely low demand. Rather than waste these donations, they can be processed into plasma. This processing takes all of the blood and breaks it into the four product types. This is done by centrifugation and then processing. As you are separating a whole product into four parts, there is going to be less of each part than if you were to take only the four parts independently. To make up for the smaller volume of plasma, it can be pulled from multiple whole blood donations to create a single bag of plasma. The second option is a pure plasma donation. This is a process that yields more plasma per a donor but is more uncomfortable and inconvenient for the donor. The reason we say this is that as the whole blood is taken, the unneeded or unwanted parts are put back in. This process is a leading cause of discomfort. First, you are set up as per normal with a blood donation. The only difference is that they use a slightly larger and differently designed catheter. The catheter in the vein begins by taking out the whole blood. This blood enters a centrifuge rather than into a donation blood bag. In the centrifuge, the whole blood is spun. This forces the erythrocytes, leukocytes, and plasma to separate. The plasma is then drawn off and put into the plasma bag. Returning the erythrocytes and leukocytes is where it gets uncomfortable. The red cells have formed a sort of semi-solid in the centrifuge. They need to be mixed with a citrate and saline solution. This is often a cold solution. The combination of cold and citrate prevents clotting. Then the saline is combined with this to create a free-moving liquid. This is very close to blood, but without any of the other blood products present from the plasma. This slightly cold erythrocyte and saline solution is then perfused back into your vein. The cold solution can cause mild nausea or extreme nausea in some cases. This process is repeated until the desired volume of plasma donation is reached, of blood being drawn out, centrifuged, and then the erythrocytes put back in. This product can be stored as a frozen product or transfused as a fresh product. Once thawed, the product must be used within 24 hours. Now that you have plasma in a donation bag, the bigger issue is how to use it and use it safely. Like with whole blood transfusions, there is a degree of cross-matching. There is also often a targeted recipient, often someone who has been diagnosed with one or more of the following conditions, congenital or acquired clotting disorders, 
liver disease, severe hemorrhage, or deficiencies in specific clotting factors. There are others as well. The nature of plasma means that there is a combination of white cells and antibodies in it. These can help in dealing with invading pathogens. Similarly, platelets can help with clotting issues. If you have bleeding internally but can't deal with it with your own blood, this can help. Proteins in the plasma can help with various deficiencies, but we're looking particularly at both albumin and antibodies. Plasma is also useful if your body has difficulty maintaining fluid homeostasis. Infusing plasma avoids the issue of excess red blood cells, but also brings the body's fluid or blood fluid level up to the appropriate level. This means you have the right volume and you won't damage certain organs that require a higher blood pressure. Things like protein, immunoglobulins, and clotting factors can each be separated out of plasma in a process called fractionation. These individual components to plasma can also be stored for an extended period, in some cases up to a year. The recipient for a plasma infusion needs to begin by being matched for blood type. The best matches are from the same blood type, but this is not always possible. There are also situations in which someone should not be receiving plasma. One of the most obvious issues is if you are about to increase the blood volume. If somebody already has high blood pressure or has damaged arteries, increasing the amount of fluid in those arteries could cause further damage or rupture. In some cases, there could be issues with immune deficiencies. And there are also nutritional reasons not to do this. When someone is being given plasma, it can treat things like trauma, burn, and shock. Situations in which the body loses a lot of fluid very quickly, or thinks it has lost a lot of fluid very quickly. This is sort of like a top-up method, adding a little bit of extra fluid, in fact quite a lot of extra fluid, but in a way that is relatively safe. It can also be used from a pharmaceutical point of view. The best example of this is tetanus. If you've ever been given a tetanus shot or a tetanus booster, there's a very good chance that you have actually received at least some sort of plasma-based product. One of the things that is used is the immunoglobulins from a plasma donor. These contain specific matches for the tetanus antigen. The tetanus antigen is very specific and so using specific antibodies means that, at least in theory, it can be used as a booster, a temporary improvement to your immune system's ability to identify tetanus. This along with the tetanus vaccine means that anyone who's been infected by it or could have been infected by it is given short-term protection from the antibodies from the plasma and longer-term protection by the vaccine. The few weeks where the antibodies continue to circulate is where you're at most risk while waiting for the vaccine to become effective. After that, the vaccine takes over. Another instance of its application is in the prevention of spontaneous abortion of a fetus. This occurs in those suspect of hemolytic disease of the newborn. It's a situation in which the mother's blood type does not match the developing fetus, and as a result, the immune system attempts to destroy the fetus. Infusion of plasma can prevent this. There are other instances, such as hepatitis and haemophilia, where it works as well. Now that you know how plasma donations are selected, how they're sourced, and what they're used for, we should look at some of the more recent examples, and this is as a therapy for infection. At least in theory, plasmas hopped onto the immune cells from the host for quite a long period. This can include instances where you've been infected with a virus, as is the case at the moment with many people experiencing COVID-19. Plasma from these individuals will have antibodies to COVID-19 in it. Their plasma can be infused into a new person or new recipient who will then be able to help fight off the COVID-19 virus or the cells it has infected. This is called convalescent plasma therapy. Overall, there are three main types of products that will come out of plasma. 
immunoglobulins, clotting factors, and albumin if they aren't using the whole plasma product. Immunoglobulins are used to treat disorders through immune problems or to make up for deficiencies in your immune system. Then there are clotting factors that deal with bleeding disorders, either those that are required or those that are inherent to the patient. Albumin has helped with fluid loss as it helps to maintain blood volume. Overall, where you have normal blood donors as the universal sort of process, where you have type O negative blood being given to everyone, type AB is the universal plasma donor. If you are type AB blood and are thinking of donating, you might want to consider donating plasma instead. This is especially true if you have been told that your blood type is not currently in demand. If plasma is an option, it is a slightly longer process, it is certainly more uncomfortable, but it goes into a lot more blood products that do a world of good that you may not have realised. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions that you have below.